So you you're uh, you're comfortable around ground beef. You you know how to form a little hamburger. It's not something you don't buy them prefabricated. There's nothing prefabricated about this, bubs. Did you put some Worcestershire in the meat? Not yet. You're going to. I go top. And just light seasoning. Salt and pepper. Salt and pepper. That's the way to do it. If it's good meat. I'm more of a burger connoisseur when it comes to eating them. You are, are you a big burger eater? You mean to tell me you've never seen Burger Time? Never enough makeup on this baby. God, don't these people realize this is gonna be on YouTube? Hey, uh, Julie, uh, we're live. Oh, I'm Julian Edelman, and this is Burger Time. On Burger Time and in his other YouTube videos, the lighter side of New England Patriots wide receiver Julian Edelman is on full display. Today, we're gonna to be making the best friend smoothie. A smart kid, very, very quick, very witty. Riding these horses here in Israel is a little different. He's wild, man. He's, he's completely crazy sometimes. You can joke with him, rip on him, but watch out, because he's gonna come right back at you. Julian's sense of humor is A+. Plus. How tall are you? 5'10". Legit. You're legit 5'10". 5'10 and a fourth. Now it's cooler at your shoulder. Do you consider yourself Jewish? I consider myself Jew-ish. <laughs> but not everything is a joke to Julian Edelman. Edelman to the end zone! Touchdown! How do you not love number 11? The Iron Man! In Super Bowl 49, he scored the fourth quarter touchdown that gave New England its first title in a decade. On the NFL's most consistently successful team, he's one of the alpha dogs. Most men, you think, want to be Rob Gronkowski or Tom Brady. If you're like a frat kid at like any school in the country, you want to be Rob. Uh -huh. you know, if you're young professional that wants to be some stud with a hot wife, great life, you're Tom. Are you more on the Rob side or you think you want to be on the Tom side? I'm on my side. <laughs> Julian Edelman was born 29 years ago in a place named for the tallest living things on planet Earth, Redwood City, California. From the beginning, he aimed high. He's always wanted to be a football player. He was practicing his autograph in the fourth grade. Who was Julian's hero? Deion Sanders. Jules loved him, and that's why Jules wore 21 in Pop Warner, and he wore the little wristbands and the leg bands. Julian Edelman on the carry over the left side. When I'd come home from work, he would make sure, Dad, it's time to go. Let's go practice. Beginning at the age of four, Julian was coached by his father, an auto mechanic. Like his son, Julian's father grew up wanting to be a football hero. He was just three years old when his own father died. My father had a, a rough childhood where he didn't have his dad. Uh, he was in and out of homes with his mom. So uh, he became a mechanic at 14, 15. He was too small and didn't have someone to push him. He lived that life and he didn't want me to live that life. You have to be a man. No excuses. The world doesn't care. If you want something, you go out and earn it and you go out and get it. My dad was a, uh, he was very tough on me. You know, there'd be times where I'd come home from working out with him and I'd be crying when I was young and my mom would have to separate us. And, you know, it was one of those type of relationships and he'd come in and apologize and say, oh, you know, we're just trying to get you better. You gotta be mentally tough, this, that. Our worst sport was baseball. That's when, you know, when I'd start hucking balls at him, he'd start <laughs> popping off. <laughs> well, you, you, what do you mean at him? <laughs> Close to him, I had to brush him off the plate. People would be riding their bikes by like, holy, what's going on over here? And I was the type of kid that would, you know, look at him and 
say throw throw it harder or something like that, and he would throw it harder. You know, one time at Sequoia, he did charge the mound. He was about 14 years old, and he charged the mound, and so we were wrestling around on the mound. <laughs> but this is... I saw that. That was a scene in the Bad News Bears. It, you know what? I tell you, the, the Bad News Edelmans, whether it was wrong or right, um, that's what we did. Do you ever think it was too much? Always. I always thought it was too much. <laughs> It was something that always made me want to prove him, you know, wrong when he was trying to test me. In high school, Julian would be tested in a different way. How big were you? My freshman year, I was 4'11", buck 05. He'd come in the room at night and say, Dad, when am I going to grow? And I'd say, son, just hang in there. Just hang in there. And he did grow. By his senior year in 2004, he'd reached 5'10", and as a scrambling quarterback, led his team to a perfect record. How much interest was there in you as a player coming out of high school? Zero. They would never look at me, and I kind of took that personal. The following year, Edelman played at San Mateo Junior College running and throwing for 31 touchdowns. Still, he continued to be mostly overlooked, attracting serious attention from only one Division I program, Kent State. I met him actually working out. Here's this little scrawny guy, and at first, to be honest, I thought he was a kicker. I thought he was our kicker. We're all warming up. Our starting quarterback, big, tall kid, 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, good looking arm. He's just punting the ball, you know, messing around. Julian walks up to him and says, hey, you might want to get used to doing that. Julian's like, that's all you're going to do the rest of the time I'm here. Edelman was right. He started his first season at Kent State. And in three seasons there total, amassed 5,000 passing yards and more than 2,000 rushing yards with 52 touchdowns. And now look at Julian Edelman with those tremendous legs of his. But Edelman knew he was no one's idea of an NFL quarterback. So the winter following his senior season, he would drive every day to and from Cleveland, a 90 minute round trip to transform himself into a receiver. I'd wake up at five, I'd make my breakfast, and then we would drive over in my, my S10. It was like a 94. We were lacking the old heater, so we would snuggle up in sleeping bags. You can't ever tell Julian he can't do something. It gets him going, and he will prove you wrong. 328 players were invited to the NFL Combine in February 2009. Edelman wasn't among them. The only time scouts came to see him was on his pro day at Kent State. He's at his pro day. He runs a five-yard shuttle. Make him run it again. Same, same time. He ran it three or four times because people, didn't, the scouts did not believe that was correct time. Edelman's time was the best in the nation that year. Still, it was far from a sure thing that he'd be drafted. I'm sitting there and I'm watching the draft and seeing all these guys go and thinking, oh, Green Bay may not be that bad. I was a Niners fan, but we can, we can get over that. With the 232nd pick, New England has selected Julian Edelman, wide receiver from Kent State. Bill, I can still remember it, says, uh, no, we don't know what you're going to play, but uh, <laughs> you can play ball. <laughs> In Bill Belichick, Edelman had found a coach who believed in him and someone he would observe keenly. I understand you have um, a gift for impersonation. <laughs> Give me a little bit of Bill Belichick in context as a coach. Coach, don't kill me. August 13, 2009. 
I remember the first time I, I played against him. I was in Philly. He was it was his first punt return, I think, of the year. Rocca hits a high end over end kick down to the 25, and Edelman, as you said, Randy, doesn't waste any time. Heads straight ahead, and he's in open field right now. And Edelman might take it the distance. No flags that we see, and rookie Julian Edelman's in the end zone. Then he spiked the ball against the wall, which kind of pissed our team off. But you know, I understand. You know, after meeting him, how highly competitive he is, and it makes for a great football player. It was his first game in the NFL. Julian Edelman had arrived, or so he thought. You always knew the Patriots won. And you knew they had Tom Brady, they had Randy Moss, they had Wes Welker. You know, I was kind of like having epiphanies of like me and Wes Welker in the slot together with Randy Moss outside. <laughs> and uh, that didn't happen. <laughs> Wes didn't share this vision? Ah, not at first, I don't think so. Rebuffed by his fellow receivers, Edelman focused his attention on another possible bromance with another late round draft pick from the Bay Area. I'm walking with my big old playbook and he walks through the door and he goes, hey, I'm Tom. I like dropped my, my playbook and I'm like, oh, nice to meet you, Tom. <laughs> Jul Julian, Julian, you know, all, all nervous. We sat next to each other in the locker room. Uh, you know, I kind of did anything for him. If you needed something, I'd go get him. You were his gopher? Hey. <laughs> it's the hand that feeds you. <laughs> That's right. I can definitely see Julian wanting to do those errands for Tom, running around, Tom, what do you need? I heard that him and some of the receivers would go out to L.A. and they would throw. So I move out to L.A. You moved to L.A.? Well, in the off season, To be near Tom? To be near him just in case he needed me. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Ted, serious. He loves Tom. Tom and Julian have a lot in common. Tommy was a six-round pick. Julian was a seventh-round pick. They're both very, very, very competitive. Tom, I think, knew I was in town and called me like twice that year. And we go to year four, and we were going three days a week. You know, and then I was going to have lunch at his house. Lunch at the house. Lunch at the house. That's all it took was four years four of years. dedication. You had me at hello. <laughs> <laughs> but Edelman's relationship with his quarterback went mostly unconsummated until Edelman's fifth season in 2013. That year, Edelman caught 105 passes from Tom Brady for six touchdowns and more than 1,000 yards. Finally, he was a full partner in the firm of Brady and Belichick. I understand you have a gift for impersonation. <laughs> Give me a little bit of Bill Belichick in context as a coach. I can remember vividly, we had a, a big team win. Sits us down on Monday, we're watching a film, and he has what we call Bill Tube, which is low lights. And all of a sudden, he'll stand up, and he, he'll go, <laughs> You mean to tell me you can't make a wide route throw? We have people in Foxborough High School that can do that. <laughs> what, what about Tom Brady? Uh, when you disappoint him, how does he react? What are we doing? Jules! Jules! Come on, guys! Let's go! He goes up. Come on, babe. Come on, babe. Need you here, babe. <laughs> Brady never needed Edelman more than during the 2014 playoffs leading up to Super Bowl 49. He's gonna look to throw downfield. Amandola wide open. Fix the catch the 18 in stride. He's gone! Touchdown! Patriots! In the AFC title game, Edelman would catch nine passes as the Patriots defeated Indianapolis 45-7. The Colts would then famously allege that the Patriots had cheated. Do you understand if some people feel the Patriots' achievements are diminished because of what they think about those balls being deflated? The balls were inflated perfectly in the second half, and that's when we scored our points in that game, so I don't know. 
how would you describe the culture on the Patriots in terms of playing by the rules? We play by the rules just like everyone else. Coach is always a stickler about everything. Uh, and, you know, it's just that we're always winning, that people always try to bring, bring something out. Two weeks after the win over the Colts, the Patriots were back in the Super Bowl. In the fourth quarter, trailing Seattle by 10, they faced a crucial third and 14. Brady fires down the middle, catch by Edelman! He took a huge hit from Cam Chancellor. When you got hit by Chancellor, what was going through your head? Tom stepped up in the pocket, he took a little extra time. You know, you prepare for that hit and once you get hit, you know, I thought I was, I didn't think I was down and got up and I got up and started running, try to get some more yards, and you know, I, was, I was beat. I was tired after that play. In your head? My head was good. No concussion? I don't, I don't, I don't think so, no. What's a concussion? <laughs> I'm not a doctor, Neither but there is, there is a definition. I don't think I had one. I passed all the tests. Should you have been out there? Yeah. Definitely. You know, it's, it's a Super Bowl. I, I got up, I ran. I was good. Good to go. Edelman stayed in the game, and on the next drive, with his parents in the stands, it was Edelman who caught the game-winning touchdown. Throws for Edelman! Touchdown! Patriots! They're back in the lead! It's Super Bowl! What was that moment you shared with your father after the Super Bowl? It kind of just brought a tear to my eye because, you know, it brings me back to him not having his childhood that he wanted and me getting to live out a dream. Oh, we cried. Yeah, we just cried. To win a Super Bowl, to catch the winning touchdown pass. I mean, how much bigger can it be? My dad, uh, he's had my back since day one, and he's pushed me through height to heights that I thought I never could get to. Um, you know, my dad was just a little trailer trash white dude that uh, you know worked his tail off, didn't have a dad. You know, started working at 14, didn't get to play sports, and he dedicated his life to my, his kids. Um, to let us live our dreams, so you know, I, I love my dad. A Super Bowl hero, an NFL star, Tom Brady's buddy, Julian Edelman has reached the pinnacle. For the kid who was undersized and frequently underestimated, who knows what's next? He wants to be a commentator or an actor or a broadcaster or whatever. He's a made-for-TV guy. I can definitely see him wanting to be the lead singer in a boy band, for sure. Got a couple things on my sleeve, but we'll, we'll keep those there in the sleeve. <laughs> what, what does that mean? <laughs> I don't even know. I just made that up.